Hi, hello friends, good morning. With this we started a new NCRT series, Geography, from class 6 to class 12. Today we will cover the topic of solar system. And in this topic the major important points are the constellation celestial bodies and the planets, earth, galaxies, asteroids and meteoroids. We will cover each and every topic by line by line. See, which is useful for the these NCRTs are majorly useful for competitive exams and UPSC prelims and mains. For civil service exam, you, uh, NCRTs are must. So each and every NCRT is, is very important for to crack civil services and uh, state service examinations. So we will cover the topic solar system today. So what uh, the solar system? The solar system means the solo means the Roman god, which means so the entire solar system, the central part of the uh, solar system is sun, which was surrounded by eight planets. We will discuss each and every one step by step. Some introduction regarding to the solar system. In the solar system, the celestial bodies are present. What is mean by celestial bodies? The sun, moon, all those objects shining in the night sky is called celestial bodies. Stars and celestial bodies are very big. They are made up of hot gases. They have their own weight and light. These are the celestial bodies. It means celestial bodies have their own weight and their own light, which means they are they don't uh, they they are not depend on any another 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 thing, which means in uh, to be for which is used for, which is for a uh, light and heat. Constellation constellations are various parts patterns formed by different groups of stars, in like Saptarshi Mandala. Saptarshi Mandala is a group of seven stars which is called as uh, constellations. Planets do not have their own heat and light. Uh, unlike star, celestial bodies have their own, weight, uh, their own weight and light. Planets do not have their own weight. Do not, uh, planets do not have their own heat and light. All its heat f light from sun. Sun is our nearest star. Moon is a satellite, which is also moon. Moon is also moon is a natural satellite for Earth. Moon is a satellite moves around the Earth about twenty seven days, twenty seven days, which means in every month there was fifteen days and fifteen days. Uh, fifteen days it is Amavasya and fifteen days it is Pournami. This is uh, based on the moon revol revolving of moon. It is it will be formed. The interesting facts regarding to the solar system. Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus have rings around them. These are belts of debris, which is important topic and which is important in competitive exam. Please keep it in mind. The Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus have their rings around them. These are belts of small debris. Here the representation. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. The uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. In these planets, there was a deb uh, debris of. See, all belts of small debris are present in Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. So keep it mind in these de these rings are we can see from the Earth with the help of powerful telescope. The solar system. Solar system consists of eight planets and around the eight the central part of solar system is sun these eight planets are namely mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune all these eight planets of solar system move around the sun in a fixed path these fixed paths are also called these fixed paths are called orbits the these are the, the path that are revolving around the sun is in a elongate uh, elongated like an elliptical, elliptical manner. The shape of that uh, orbit is elliptical shape. See the 
the eight planet actually originally it was nine planets the pluto it was termed as dwarf planet it is no, no more considered as a planet it is a dwarf planet so solar system we have eight planets right now first planet is v uh, mercury which is very nearest to sun and then venus then after our living earth afterwards mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune all these eight planets in a in a periodical order in competitive exams so they are asking majorly uh, some important facts about solar system like venus venus is considered as earth's twins it is important objective bit in uh, competitive exams like prelims and uh, prelims of upsc and uh, some of the uh, various state service examinations venus is considered as earth's twin because its size and shape are very much similar to that of earth and pluto is a dwarf planet already i said right venus is very much hot because it is uh, second to the sun uh, it is very hot planet because based on the condi- based on the atmosphere present in the in the gases in venus it is more heat compared to mercury venus is also called as earth earth twins the earth twins is an object to bit please keep it in mind why because it is earth twins because its size and shape are very much similar to that of earth earth is a third nearest planet to the sun and uh, largest planet its shape the based on uh, distance it is third nearest planet to planet in the solar system and uh, the in in the shape of la, in the shape it is a fifth largest planet in the solar system see uh, uh, sun is uh, nearest uh, nearest star to the earth and after sun alpha centauri it is a nearest star to the second nearest star to the sun, uh, second nearest star to the earth see neil armstrong already we know about him neil armstrong was the first man to step on the surface of the moon on 24 july 1969 he was the first person to step in a moon he was an american scientist american scientist he was indian satellites the first indian satellite was aryabhata some of the indian satellites which are uh, these satellites are man made satellites which is these are not natural satellites and like uh, moon is a natural satellite right these are uh, these are man made satellites like insat edusat irns 3d these are all some examples of uh, man made indian satellites galaxy galaxy means is a number of uh, huge number of stars in a combined manner uh, uh, and the clouds of dust and gases the galaxy means a huge system of billions of stars and clouds of dust and gases this is as galaxies like palapunta it is an example of galaxy asteroids asteroids is a tiny body move around the sun found between orbits of mars and uh, jupiter it is very important actually in which pla- in which planets asteroids are present in between mars and jupiter asteroids are present please keep it in mind it is asking in various exams meteoroids meteoroids are small pieces of rocks move around the sun it is meteoroids meteoroids asteroids and uh, earth winds and uh, earth the position and uh, then after the stars present in the uh, solar system like alpha centauri uh, sun these are the major important uh, topics in solar system then we will move on to latitudes and longitudes see before we move on to latitudes and longitudes we will see the diagrammatic representation i mean the pictorial representation of solar system the entire solar system the central part is sun then after mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune these are the pictorial representation of solar system how it has to be these planets all revolve around the sun in a fixed path in a elliptical manner in elliptical shape see we move on to the topic latitudes and longitudes latitudes and longitudes 
see we consider earth as a globe uh, the earth has consist of uh, horizontal lines and vertical lines the introduction regarding to the latitudes and latitude uh, longitudes introduction equator equator is a imaginary line running on the globe that divides equal parts of the earth in two parts which is northern part of the hemisphere is northern hemisphere southern part of the hemisphere is called southern hemisphere which is on the central line we mean it as equator it is zero degree line the equal this la these latitudes are measured in degrees latitudes are actually horizontal parallel lines that diva the that uh, that running on the globe the horizontal lines are called latitudes vertical lines are called longitudes the central line which is called uh, equator equator this is zero degree line these equator divides globe in two parts northern hemisphere southern hemisphere the 90 degree north latitude marks as north pole and 90 degrees south latitude marks as south latitude which is the pole north pole south pole these are these poles are very cool in nature they don't have any um, like uh, sun rays are not um, receive very much here uh, the glacier parts are very cool here or there see lines of latitude this is horizontal lines lines of latitude run parallel to the equator and are often referred as parallels these parallels are latitudes the latitudes are on the central latitude is equator this is zero degrees and uh, some important facts regarding to latitudes important parallels of latitudes important latitudes and heat zones we will discuss about these topics tropic of cancer this is 23 and of degree in northern hemisphere in 23 degree in northern hemisphere latitude is called tropic of cancer 23 degree 23 and of degree in northern hemisphere is called tropic of cancer 23 and of degree in southern hemisphere is called as tropic of capricorn the southern hemisphere northern hemisphere we know that this southern hemisphere 23 and of degree is called tropic of capricorn the 23 and of degree in northern hemisphere is called tropic of cancer the arctic circle at 66 and of north of the equator north of the equator uh, 66 and of degree line is called arctic circle the south of the equator 66 and of degree line is called antarctic circle so please keep it in mind these lines are very important if so uh, often they they are asking some heat zones there are frigid zones and torrid zones these are also very important in uh, except uh, in the case of prelims of upsc uh, they are not asking very much in deep in like uh, states uh, services examinations so if we we, we focused on majorly on civil services prelims uh, they are asking in de in depth so torrid zones and frigid zones are very important what is mean by torrid zone torrid zone means which is which receives maximum heat in all latitudes in between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn torrid zones are uh, located in between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn so torrid zone means uh, you, so we will understand about the torrid zone first torrid zone means trop it is in between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn these areas receives maximum heat from the sun so these are the region contains more heat these it is torrid zone then move on to frigid zones see before we move on to frigid zones some important uh, important information regarding to torrid zones the mid of sun never shines overhead on any latitude beyond the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn the angle of sun goes on decreases towards the pole see these torrid zones receives maximum heat right then frigid zones receives less heat so that it is very cold frigid zones are very cold torrid zones are very heat heat zones are called torrid zones 
कूल जोन्स आर कॉल्ड फ्रिजिड जोन्स सो प्लीज कीप इट इन माइंड फ्रिजिड जोन्स दिस आर वेरी कोल्ड रीजन द एरिया लेइंग बिटवीन आर्किटिक सर्किल एंड नॉर्थ पोल इन द नॉर्दन हेमिस्पियर एंड अंटार्किटिक सर्किल and south pole in the southern hemisphere are very cold already i said poles are very cold right the the area between arctic circle and north pole is uh, is frigid zone in northern hemisphere antarctic circle and south pole in southern hemisphere is called frigid are very cold these are frigid zones it is because here the sun does not rise much above the horizon it uh, receives very less heat it uh, these areas are very cold compared to from uh, torrid zones this is these are the very important topic actually so please keep it in mind frigid zones and torrid zones some different islands like tonga island it is located in pacific ocean mauritius island it is located in indian ocean these two islands are locations are tonga islands are pacific ocean mauritius islands are indian ocean the both are situated in the same latitude i mean same horizontal line which is 20 degrees in south the southern hemisphere uh, these are located in southern hemisphere mauritius island tonga island these are in same line which is in 20 degrees south line and we will move on to meridians and uh, prime meridian indian standard time we will discuss these three topics lines of references running from the north pole to the south pole meridians meridian means see lines of references running from the north pole to south pole see meridians are it is a type of longit uh, longitude means vertical line which from which is running from south uh, from north to north pole to south pole prime meridian meridian which passes through the green which green which which is which is a royal british observatory located in located in london um, its value is 0 degree 0 degree longitude is called as greenwich line this is actually which passes through london the degree of longitude uh, and from its we count 180 degree eastward as well as 180 degree westward so we will take uh, long uh, greenwich time right the entire uh, the world we will take green which local time changes by 4 minutes for every 1 degree of longitude for each and every 1 degree of longitude local time changes by 4 minutes the indian standard time is taken as 182 and of degree east 82 and of degree east treated as a, as the indian standard time as the standard meridian which passes through india uh, the country of india the local time at this meridian is taken as a standard time for the whole country the indian standard time is 82 and of degree east longitude so please keep it in mind they are asking in where in competitive exams the ist i mean indian standard time uh, the longitude they are asking so it is 82 and of degree east see in the topic of latitudes and longitude we cover uh, we cover the northern hemisphere southern hemisphere equator south pole north pole tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn arctic circle antarctic circle and the torrid zone frigid zones and uh, these are the temperate zones and then after islands which are located in the same latitude that is mauritius island tonga islands and meridians prime meridians indian standard time so please keep it in mind these are very important actually they are asking majorly indian standard time uh, meridians greenwich time uh, then after frigid zones and torrid zones uh, and afterwards poles Uh, uh temperature regions uh, poles are located southern pole and northern pole and equator it is a central line of the uh, globe which divides northern hemisphere southern hemisphere so please keep it in mind we will move on to the motions of earth so motions of the earth 
introduction regarding to the motions of the earth in motions of the earth there are two two important term that is rotation and revolution rotation is the movement of the earth on its own axis movement of the earth around the sun in a fixed orbit is called revolution rotation is rotation means movement of the earth its own axis is called rotation movement of the earth around the sun is in a fixed path is called revolution revolution rotations are important the axis of the earth is an imaginary line makes an angle of 66 and of degree with the orbital plane the circle that divides the day from the night on the globe is called circle of illumination what is mean by circle of illumination circle that divides the day from the night and the globe is and uh, day from the night on the globe is called circle of illumination the revolution of earth what do you mean called revolution revolution means movement of the earth around the sun in a fixed path is called revolution rotation means movement of the earth in its own axis is called rotation the revolution of earth takes 365 one 365 days or one year 365 days by 1 by 4th i mean or one year revolution of earth takes one year rotation of earth takes one day see here rotation earth rotation the axis earth have an imaginary axis but earth doesn't have any axis we it is an imaginary line the passing through the north uh, north and south pole earth axis is tilted it is in til- tilted 23 and of degrees see here that pictorial representation here over there and rotation rotation means earth sp- spinning on its axis axis one time which is one t- uh, 24 hours a day and night cycle which is the time is the rotation that is rotation of earth takes 24 hours day and night cycle which is see here the representation the plane of elliptic is passes through the center the earth is in tilted 23 and of degrees which is a perpendicular to the elliptic see here rotation of earth takes 24 hours which is one day uh, day consists of uh, which, which is one complete one day 24 hours half day night uh, 12 hours day and 12 hours night so please keep it in mind rotation and revolution are different revolution takes 365 days rotation takes 24 hours so please keep it in mind we will discuss rotation right here we will move on to revolution of the earth it takes 365 days and 6 hours revolution takes 365 days 6 hours to complete one revolution rotation takes 24 hours it will complete one rotation 24 hours what do you mean by rotation revolve around its own axis is called rotation revolve around its uh, around the sun in a fixed path is called revolution revolution takes 365 days and 6 hours to complete one revolution the distance between the earth and the sun changes due to revolution the based on revolution distance between sun and the earth earth is changes based on the revolving around the sun it will changes the uh, seasons and at the same time days he see here the center part of the is sun this changes distance also cause change in seasons here over there the end center part is sun sun is uh, this earth is revolve revolve around the sun in a fixed manner from see we take from जॉन वरी सौ जून कदा सी हियर ईक्वेटर सी अर्थ मूव अरउंड मार्च ईक्वेटर इट विल मूव स्पिंग देन आफ्टर समर सीजन स्प्रिंग सीजन आफ्टरवर्ड्स समर सीजन आफ्टरवर्ड्स आटम सीजन आफ्टरवर्ड्स विंटर सीजन विंटर सीजन इज इट इज इन बिटवीन इट इज इन बिटवीन सेप्टेंबर टू सॉरी इट इज इन अक्टोबर टू फेब्रवरी आफ्टरवर्ड्स स्प्रिंग सीजन spring season is february to um, there actually there we have 12 months e, in 12 months each and every season is 3 3 months autumn season 3 months winter season 3 months spring season 3 months summer season 3 months summer season is 
we get more heat from heat from the sun autumn season we will receive also uh, compared to summer less heat winter season we will receive less heat compared to autumn season we will receive less heat compared to summer season here over the complete revolution of the earth cycle it takes 365 days based on the revolution of earth it will change as the seasons summer season autumn season winter season spring season it is because of the revolution of the earth it is not because of the rotation of the earth rotation of the earth is different revolution of the earth is different rotation of earth takes 24 hours revolution of earth takes 365 days based on the revolution of earth it will change as the seasons like spring winter autumn summer see earth climate facts which is warm the warm part warm to hot the central part means equator line which is latitude the center zero degree latitude moves around the equator line which is the, the which receives more heat rise this is a this is the equator which is an imaginary line that middle of the earth which divides northern hemisphere southern hemisphere the equator is rather summer like warm or hot all around all year around complete year around it will receive more heat compared to poles uh, north pole is the topmost of the part of the earth which is located in northern hemisphere and south pole is the bottom most of the part both of these play places we winter like very cold year around because which receives very less heat compared to equator we we will live on the earth and see here cold places are poles and hot places are equator this is the climate facts regarding to the earth leap year see the next we will move on to leap year six hours saved every year are added to make one day over a span of four years leap year means it will it will come uh, every four years leap year consists of 366 days where normal year consists of 365 days leap year in february we have 28 days right in leap year we have in february 29 days only in leap year we have 29 days every fourth year of the february is 29 days instead of 28 days such year with the 365 days is called leap year some facts regarding to this on 21st june the northern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun the rays of the sun falls directly tropic of cancer this area receive more heat see on 21st June, on the Northern Hemisphere, on Tropic of Cancer, receive more heat because sun falls directly on Tropic of Cancer. On 21st June, we have more heat. And the areas near the poles receive less heat due to sun rays falls on slanting. The directly falls on Tropic of Cancer, which receives more heat on 21st June. In, in poles area, it receives less heat because of slanting of sun rays. The direct rays are fallen tropic of cancer they receive more heat in on 21st june in poles area which receive less heat compared to slanting of based on the based on the direction of uh, sun rays it will receive less heat and more heat longest day and shortest night occur on 21st june the summer solastis summer solastis winter solastis are very important in competitive exams so please keep it in mind uh, so, uh, so go through this uh, very con it, actually they are asking uh, so uh, so many competitive exams so summer solstice winter solstice are important 21st june receive more heat in northern hemisphere which is called summer uh, summer solstice what is mean by solstice solstice means longest day and shortest night longest day shortest night means uh, they receive more day day time is more night time is very less so 21st june summer is, uh, is solastis and 22 december winter solastis winter solastis means longest night and shortest day longest night and shortest day it is called winter solastis winter solastis uh, it is on 22 december summer solastis which is 21 june which is called 21 june we receive more heat 22 december we receive less heat because it is winter season winter solastis so solastis means longest day and long summer solastis means longest day and longest uh, shortest night winter solastis means this is shortest day and sh longest night 
then we will move on to equinoxes i uh, what is mean by equinox equinoxes are called equal days and equal nights which means actually it is occur in year 21st march of march and september 23rd in every year 21st march and september 23rd we have equal day and night these are equinoxes solstices are uh, uh, summer solstices winter solstices equinoxes are two dates are important 21st march and september 23 are we we will have equal night and equal day see equinox on 23rd september is the autumn season the northern hemisphere and spring season in the southern uh, southern hemisphere we have spring season on the southern hemisphere on 23rd september and 23rd september autumn season in northern hemisphere and 21st march spring season in the northern hemisphere autumn season in the southern hemisphere see equinoxes are formed in 21st march and 23rd september so please keep it in mind equal day and night is called equinox see this is a representation of equinox the two days of year on which neither hemisphere is tilted toward away from the sun means equal night and because the day and night are almost equal march and september are equinoxes are formed which means 21st march and 23rd september we have equal day and night which is equinox solstices are different equinoxes are different solstices means we have 21st june and 23rd 21st june and 23rd december sorry 21st june and 22 december is called e solstice that is summer solstice 21st june winter solstice 22 uh, de 22 december equinoxes are different solstices are different solstice summer solstice uh, winter solstice summer solstice 21st june which receive more heat and uh, winter solstice 22 december which receive less heat this is cold i mean less heat from the sun equinoxes are equal day and night which is 21st march and 23 september as equal day and night 21st june and 22 december is summer solstice and winter solstice so please keep it in mind this is the complete topics of earth solar system in the earth and motions of the earth latitudes and longitudes we will cover the complete uh, ncr uh, complete for uh, sixth class geography ncrt so to uh, sorry we will cover the first topic of 6th uh, class geography and crt tomorrow we will move on to the topic of major domains of the earth so please subs please subscribe and comment madhu shri vastava cultural and education channel so please like and share and comment please subscribe thank you